Soyuz at the Guiana Space Center also known as Soyuz at CSG or Ariane Space Soyuz is an ongoing ESA program for operating Soyuz Street launch vehicles from Guiana Space Center CSG providing medium size launch capability for Ariane Space to accompany the light Vega and heavy lift Ariane 5 the Soyuz vehicle is supplied by the Russian Federal Space Agency with TSSKB Progress and NPO Lavochkin, while additional components are supplied by Airbus, Thales Group, and RUAG. The Ariane Space Soyuz project was announced by the ESA in 2002. Cooperation with Russia began in two areas construction of a launch site for Soyuz in CSG and development of the Soyuz launch vehicle modified for the Guiana Space Center. A program declaration was signed in 2003 and funding along with final approval was granted on 4 February 2005. Initial excavation for the Ensemble de Lancement Soyuz ELS, Soyuz Launch Complex began in 2005, construction started in 2007, and the launch complex was completed in early 2011, allowing Arianespace to offer launch services on the modified Soyuz Street B to its clients. Two early flights, VS-02 and VS-04, and a recent flight, VS-17, used the Soyuz Street A variant. Since 2011, Ariane Space has ordered a total of 23 Soyuz rockets, enough to cover its needs until 2019 at a pace of three to four launches per year. <laughs> <laughs> Features of modified Soyuz for the Guiana Space Center First use of a mobile service tower at the ELS that enabled vertical payload integration. European supplied payload adapters. European supplied KSE French, kit de sauvegarde européenne, lit. European safeguard kit, a system to locate and transmit a flight termination signal. It would activate the engine shutdown command and leave the vehicle in a ballistic trajectory. Adaptation of the S-band telemetry system on all stages from the 5 TM bands available at Baikonur, and Pulsetsik to the three allowed at the GSC range. Adaptation of the S-band telemetry coding and frequency to the IRIG standard used at GSC. Adaptation of the oxygen purge system for directing to the outside of the mobile gantry. Adaptation to the tropical GSC climate including the adaptation of the air conditioning system to local specifications and protective measures to avoid icing. All holes and cavities were studied and certified to be adequately protected against intrusion of insects and rodents. The four boosters and the core stage were upgraded with pyrotechnic devices to breach the fuel tanks to assure that they would sink in the ocean. The other stages were shown to lose structural integrity on impact and thus proven to sink. At least initially, the boosters and core stage would use the pyrotechnically ignited 14D22 RD107A and 14D23 RD108A rather than the chemically ignited 14D22 KHZ and 14D23 KHZ used on the rest of the Soyuz 2. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Vehicle processing. Soyuz components arrive at the CSG via ship, and are unloaded and placed in a storage area. From there, the components are brought to the Launch Vehicle Integration Building where they're assembled horizontally in an air-conditioned environment. First four boosters are attached to the core stage, and then third stage is attached to the core, identical to the procedure at Baikonur and Pulsetsik Cosmodrome. Separately, the payload is mounted on a dispenser in a payload processing facility and then transferred into the S3B building to be mounted to the frigate upper stage and then encapsulated in a fairing. Subsequently, the first three stages of the Soyuz Street are transported from the integration building to the launch pad by a train which also erects the rocket to the vertical position at the pad, where Soyuz is suspended by four support arms. Once vertical, a mobile gantry moves in and encloses Soyuz. Following that the encapsulated frigate and payload is lifted vertically by a mobile gantry to be mounted on top of Soyuz. The mobile gantry is retracted an hour before the launch. <laughs> Future developments Ariane Space plans to operate Soyuz until at least the end of 2019, and as of 2014 intended to continue operating Soyuz alongside the planned Ariane 6 when that launcher makes its debut. 
However, the announcement of new Ariane 6 designs from Airbus and Safran opens the possibility of Ariane 6.2 replacing Soyuz. Launch history Inaugural flight The first contract for the launch of Soyuz Street B from Guiana Space Center was signed at the 2009 Paris Air Show by the director of the Galileo Program and Navigation Related Activities René Oosterlink and a CEO of Ariane Space Jean Yves Le Gaulle. This contract covered two launches of two Galileo satellites each. The contract for the satellites themselves had already been signed by ESA and Galileo Industries in 2006. Launch vehicle components shipped from St. Petersburg first arrived in French Guiana by ship in November 2009. The Soyuz launch site acceptance review took place during the last week of March 2011, leading to the first simulated launch campaign between the 29th of April and the 4th of May. The launch site was officially handed over from ESA to the Ariane Space on the 7th of May 2011. Assembly of the Soyuz Street B began on the 12th of September 2011 in the Assembly and Testing Building, while two Galileo satellites underwent final tests after their arrival from Thales Alenia Space Facilities in Italy on 7 and the 14th of September. The launch was planned for the 20th of October. However, an anomaly was detected in the pneumatic system responsible for disconnecting the fuel lines from Soyuz third stage, forcing the mission to be postponed for 24 hours. On the 21st of October 2011, 7:30 local time, Soyuz Street B took off for its inaugural 3-hour 49-minute flight, making it the first time Soyuz was launched outside of the former Soviet Union territory. Topic. Flight VS-09 On the 22nd of August 2014 Arianespace launched the first two full operational capability satellites for the Galileo Satellite Navigation Constellation into medium Earth orbit. The mission appeared to proceed normally and Arianespace reported the launch to be a success, however analysis of telemetry data provided by ESA and CNES tracking stations showed that the satellites were injected into an incorrect orbit. The orbit was determined by the European Space Operations Centre within three hours after the separation from launcher, and the satellites were operating normally and under control. Both satellites were switched to safe mode, pointing at the Sun while both ESA, CNES and OHB teams investigated the failure and options for the satellites. On 25 August Arianespace announced the creation of an independent inquiry commission to investigate the anomaly. On 28 August details emerged on the events that most likely led to the frigate failure. At the end of the reorientation phase the flight control system detected an incorrect angular speed and unsuccessfully attempted to use thrusters to correct the situation. The flight control system did not detect the thruster issue and continued the flight plan with the upper stage oriented in a wrong direction, leaving the satellites in an incorrect orbit. In late September, the Roscosmos Commission report, quoted by Izvestia, indicated that the Fregat failure was due to a design flaw leading to freezing in one of the hydrazine propellant lines, which was placed alongside a line carrying cold helium used for pressurization of the main propellant tanks. During the long first burn required for Galileo orbital insertion the propellant line was cooled to below the freezing point of hydrazine. Further investigations were focused on the software error and a means to prevent similar failures in future. Izvestia also reported that the failure of flight VS-09 caused a serious reaction in Russian government. Oleg Ostapenko, head of Roscosmos, had a difficult conversation in the Moscow White House. On 7 October 2014 the Independent Inquiry Board announced the conclusions of its investigation, revealing that a proximity of helium and hydrazine feed lines resulted in a thermal bridge that caused an interruption of propellant supply to the thrusters. Ambiguities in the design documents allowing this to happen were a result of not taking into account thermal transfers in the thermal analyses of the stage system design. Board recommended three corrective actions, revamping thermal analysis, correcting design documents and modification of manufacture, assembly, integration and inspection procedures of the supply lines. In November, ESA announced the satellites will perform a total of 15 orbital maneuvers to raise their perigee to 17,339 kilometers. 
This will reduce the satellite's exposure to the Van Allen radiation belt, reduce the Doppler effect, increase satellite visibility from the ground, and allow the satellites to keep their antennas pointed at Earth during perigee. These orbits will repeat the same ground track every 20 days, allowing synchronization with other Galileo satellites which repeat the same ground track every 10 days. Once in their new orbits the satellites can begin in orbit testing. Recovery of the satellites concluded in March 2015 when Galileo FOCFM2 entered a new orbit mirrored to the orbit of Galileo FOCFM1 which concluded its maneuvers on the end of November 2014 and successfully passed testing. Currently satellites overfly the same location on the ground every 20 days comparing to 10 days of standard Galileo satellites. Topic. Missions All times above are local times in French Guiana UTC Topic. Scheduled flights Topic. Statistics Topic. Launch sequence Typically, operations three days before launch include countdown rehearsal for all stages as well as final preparations and verification of the frigate upper stage. Two days before launch preparations for fueling begin. This is also the last day when pre-launch activity with the payload can occur. The launch sequence is optimized for each mission. The sequence described here is based on flight VS07 which lifted the Sentinel-1A satellite.